Hi, I'm Tom and I've always had a passion for cheap, fast sailing boats and making them better. I recently purchased this super rare Bethweight high speed project trimaran on Facebook Marketplace for just 150 bucks. However, unfortunately the first time I sailed it, it sunk. So now I'm doing what I need to do to make it float again so we can get it back out on the race course and see how fast you can go for just 150 bucks. Okay, so it's been a bit over a week since I sunk this thing uh, on its first sail. So I'm pretty sure it's a centerboard case. I know that's got a huge hole in it, but I thought it'd be pretty stupid to not check if that's the only leak uh, before I start yeah, repairing that. So my dad let me his air compressor because I didn't have one. And then from years ago, I've got this bung connected to an air fitting that I've used for pressure testing other boats. So I'm gonna connect that up and uh, yeah, see what we can find. So it's super important to turn the pressure all the way down when doing this. I've just spent ages stuffing around so that the uh, they can connect up to the regulated side instead of like the full blast side because I really don't want to blow the boat up because that would suck. So after a bit of stuffing around, I think I've got it to where I get some air up here. That sounds good. Okay, now I can use this little knob to regulate the pressure. Oh, sorry, that's the airflow. I've regulated the pressure over there. But then I borrowed our baby's uh, bottle that we spray the water under his hair with, filled it with soap, and uh, now I can just go along and spray uh, each fitting and try and figure out where all the leaks are. So we'll check the centerboard case first, because that's the main culprit, and uh, see how bad that is. I got lost tonight Under the stars up in the sky Directions hard to find Under the stars up in the sky This is definitely not the ideal bottle for this. Way too misty. See all the bubbles in the centerboard case? That whole thing is one big bubble. I don't know if it comes out on the camera uh, in this light. These sort of fittings and stuff on the top, so they should be fine. Under the stars up in the sky. Directions hard to find. Under the stars up in the sky. So as you'll have seen just then, using the pressure test, although I could spot it clearly, it's got a huge crack straight through the side of the centerboard case. So uh, Aaron on Sailing Anarchy, who's got the other one, said the same thing happened to his. Uh, when you try and stand on it to ride it, uh, someone's probably done that in the past 40 years at some point, and uh, it smashes the side of the centerboard pin through the case because uh, it's supported about halfway up, not at the top. I see this as like, there's two options. Uh, one option would be to cut a hole in the deck and just try and repair what's there and uh, maybe reinforce it. Uh, Aaron added like a bit of plastic to the top of his centerboard so it pulls up flush on the deck. But then at the same time, in the five minutes that I got to sail this boat before it sunk, you could just tell that the centerboard's really small for going around a track. Like, I believe this boat was more intended to just go for a burn off the beach and have heaps of fun. But if you're going to try and hold it in a pre-start or like sail around a course in light air on a lake or whatever like I will, the centerboard feels seriously small because like that's the size of it. And you think about how much of that gets lost in a case, uh, it's tiny. So the other thing that happens is this is obviously sitting at the front of the case like there. And this is designed to swing up into this void. but. See, there's no gaskets on this, like there isn't a 420 or a 505 or whatever. So this is like super draggy. So as Homer Simpson says, crisis opportunity, crisis opportunity. Um, I thought, why do I bother with repairing this old case when I could just cut the whole thing out and put in a vertical board? Because like in the higher performance sailing book Frank Bethwaite wrote when he was designing these boats, I believe he said, if you're gonna have a foil, keep it vertical. So to reduce area and go faster, I don't wanna be kicking it back and having cross span flow and stuff. I want to be able to retract it vertically and uh, reduce area that way to maintain uh, flow straight across the foil. So this is really cool. I was able to message uh, Julian Bethwaite, the son of Frank on, uh, and also a famous yacht designer on Sailing Anarchy and he came sort of straight back to me um, after I said, what do you think about me cutting out the whole centerboard case and putting in a normal centerboard? 
He's like, that's probably a good idea. He said, just find a 29 or a taser center board and kind of chop it in half. So I think that's super cool. Cause like, that's like, if you broke your 1980 Falcon, then that's like messaging like Henry Ford's grandson and then him telling you how to fix it. Uh, there's not a lot of sports where you have that kind of contact with like the key people and they're so friendly and readily sort of accessible. It turned out that in about 2005, my dad was sailing a taser with my brother. And my brother, I believe, fell over and smashed the top off the centerboard. So they bought a spare at the time, but ended up repairing the old one. So instead of using this centerboard that doesn't have that much grip, and then on Julian's recommendation of using a taser one, we dug through the shed. We had a feeling somewhere we'd been saving this taser centerboard for like 20 years in case it ever came in handy. So now I can put in this, which has heaps of grip, and I'll just uh, cut it somewhere, but I'll figure that out later. got the first uh, foot rail off. Those are actually surprisingly, they're not like super light like you'd think. They're not heavy, but they're not light. So I don't think they'll be going back on. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly go and uh, drill some holes in the corner of each one. I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. So I think my best tool to uh, cut out these uh, hatches in the deck so that I can access the case and replace it is my $39 Bunnings multi-tool but the uh, saw blade I've got that came with it is uh, pretty stuffed so I figured because this is a big job and I'm cutting literally meters of deck and stuff out of the boat I'd uh, invest in a decent carbide uh, blade so I think this actually cost just as much as the tool did itself so it'd want to be good Okay, so it's been about a week since I uh, made the first part of this video and I've uh, done some thinking about how I want to yeah, get this taser center board in and patch up this hole and I've uh, also talked to some of my friends that are a bit more experienced in this kind of thing than me. So I think I've come up with a bit of a plan, um, but before I start to do anything, I think I should check if the taser center board actually fits all the way in and also how far through uh, the boat I want it to sit. Like Julian said to cut it kind of in half but uh, I do want to just see where it sits and how it looks. So I'm just going to tilt the boat on its side, <laughs> measure how far the old centre board went through, then I'll do the same with the taser centre board, and uh, we'll have a look at it and try and make some decisions about uh, yeah, how deep we want it to be uh, to give us a bit, bit more grunt in light air. So I'm just going to draw a line for reference where this exited the hull. And then while we're here, so that's 450 mil deep, that board, and 243 wide, roughly. So initially I didn't think this would fit, which is why I wanted to fit a universal case. But then I quickly checked um, just before I put the cover on the boat the other day, and uh, it does actually fit. Like, it's sort of tight, but... So this has still got quite a substantial amount of board uh, protruding out the deck. So that's 400 mil of board sticking out the top and that gives us 660 mil under the water as opposed to 450 and this board in the middle is about 250 wide so we've picked up what's that about 20 mil of cord and another 200 mil of depth yeah i reckon that'll make a big difference but i think just to be safe i'm going to go just a bit more because then i can always pull it up or cut it so let's pull it do 720 because like I said, I want to sail this boat 
probably at Easter. It's almost being optimized for like Easter and lake races. So light air, lake venues, shifty, gusty, upwind, downwind. And if I want to go fast, I can pull this board up and I get next to nothing in the water and it's a really nice shape. So I've marked where it exits the hull and I've marked where it sits flush with the deck. And I still have to chop off about 300 mil of board there. Okay, so uh, given how tight this board is in the case, I figure the first uh, part of the new um, structural case that I should put in to adapt this taser board to the trimaran is um, I should make up the yeah, carbon insert that's going to go inside the uh, old case first because if that's too tight to fit, then I've got a problem and I might need to change how I do it all. So I'm just going to cut out some carbon strips and then some... Uh, more carbon to go around here and then vacuum bag it all onto this board I'll put a bit of a packer of breather cloth or something over the board first So it's got a little bit of space obviously that'll compress as the vacuum comes onto it So that's what I'm going to be laminating on top of now I'm going to cut out all my uh, pieces of reinforcement and have them all piled up ready to go Okay, so I think I'm ready to go. I've got all my stuff chopped. I've got my vacuum bagging ready to go. Vacuum bagging is always a bit tricky because I don't do it very often. Uh, but I think I've got it right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to mix up this resin that I've never used before from Olmex, the R180. So, we'll try that. And, uh, yeah, got to go out for dinner for Mother's Day very soon. So, I've got to keep moving. Okay, unfortunately the uh, camera died right towards the end of my uh, laminating and then I had to duck out to dinner just as I got the vacuum bag on but I didn't get time to actually like or get the vacuum uh, on. So I've just got back from the Indian joint. Um, it's only been about an hour and a half because uh, luckily it's close to where we live. So while I was out it's got really really cold. So I'm hoping that the resin hasn't actually, well it hasn't gone off because I can feel how squishy everything is. And um, all the stuff that I've dropped everywhere is still wet. So. Hopefully I haven't really lost too much performance. So now I'm just gonna work my way around the bag and uh, yeah, get it all sealed up. Okay, so in the end I was able to get about a 0.8 bar on this. I've got a few leaks because of my crappy job around the corner, but I'm going to leave this running for a, a while and I'll go and finish this episode and get it up. Uh, I did that survey the other night, so thanks to everyone that uh, responded to that, uh, where I asked if uh, people rather longer episodes or shorter episodes. So everyone pretty much said shorter, so I'm going to get this one up. Uh, I know it's about a sort of a different format, but um, yeah, people want more episodes more frequently where I don't really finish anything. Um, yeah, I can do that. So I'll chuck this up and uh, yeah, please remember to subscribe if you uh, yeah want to see more. Everything is gonna be alright.